Since the beginning of life on Earth, billions of species have gone extinct due to issues like climate change, catastrophic geological events, and competition within species. But in more recent times, human activity has caused species to go extinct at a rate that significantly surpasses the pace of extinction throughout most of Earth's geological history. In fact, scientists estimate that current extinction rates are 1,000 to 10,000 times higher than the average natural extinction rate. Through this alarming figure, it is apparent that the matter of increasing endangered species needs to be addressed in order to prevent the issue of extinction from getting worse. After a thorough review process, a species can be classified as either endangered or threatened if necessary. Endangered means the species is in danger of extinction throughout all or a significant part of its range. Threatened means the species is likely to become endangered in the foreseeable future. The issues of both threatened and endangered species are addressed in the Endangered Species Act, also known as the ESA, created in 1973. Yet only about 1% of species on the list have been successfully removed and rehabilitated. And between 1990 and 2010, biannual assessments of 1,292 listed species found that just over half are continuing to decline even with ESA protections. The fact that species are still declining despite the enacting of the law is a signal that more actions need to be taken in order to further protect endangered species. Because protecting endangered species and their habitats often conflicts with human economic interests, it is necessary to lay out the importance of endangered species to humans to encourage support in preserving these species. First, organisms other than humans have a natural right to exist, as well as moral and ethical value. I don't think so either, so let's steer towards a better future. Thomas Berry wrote that our great work for our generation is to learn to live on the planet at least benignly. And why would we do that? One reason we would do that is that our fellow living things who happen not to be human, they don't have a representative in Congress. They don't have a lobbyist in Washington. They don't have a voice at the table, and yet they're completely dependent on, for their survival on our goodwill. Many species also have an economic value to humans, and some, in the case of medicinal and agricultural plants, have potential not yet known economic value. Certain species also indirectly contribute to human welfare by maintaining their ecosystem through roles like nutrient cycling, species population regulation, and the removal of atmospheric carbon dioxide. For years, humans have been a leading cause of extinction for endangered and threatened species by converting forests and natural habitats into residential developments and agricultural land. But the benefits of using land that is the habitat of an endangered species for commercial enterprise must be weighed with the costs, which make it extremely difficult for a species under these conditions to survive. Motivated by profit, humans have disregarded the preservation of a species for the purpose of harvesting natural resources for urbanization and industry production despite guidelines of the ESA. Part of the reason for this has been a significant increase in the human population, leading to a rise in demand for resources and the factors of production needed to create products for consumers, which improved techniques of harvest and technology have permitted. So far, the largest measure taken to confront the issue of endangered species has been the Endangered Species Act of 1973. But still, species are continuing to decline despite the law, and very few have recovered from the list of endangered species. I believe this is due to lack of incentive. About 90% of U.S. plant and animal species listed as endangered or threatened are on private property, and more than half these species have 80% or more of their habitat on private land. Although the ESA can declare property the critical habitat of a threatened species and constrain the use of it, the law does not require landowners to be compensated. This can result in early land development by landowners that destroys habitats in order to avoid having their property constrained by the government and losing economic profit. The risk of losing the right to develop property can cause landowners to conceal information about the status of a species and its habitat conditions, leading some to kill the individuals of an endangered species they discover on their land. Instead of requiring landowners to simply give up the use of their property if it's discovered a critical habitat for a threatened species, my proposal is to include compensation when constraining this land. If landowners are compensated for the property withheld from them, they will be more inclined to report an endangered species on their land and the conditions of their habitat so these species can be better protected. 
This solution can be enacted in the form of a modification in the Endangered Species Act. Instead of just imposing negative consequences if guidelines of the ESA are not followed, the government will reward landowners for self-reporting of species on private lands and require compensation for regulatory takings of their property to protect species, as well as creating voluntary conservation agreements with no surprise clauses, which will prevent landowners from preemptively developing land that destroys habitat in order to avoid getting their land constrained. This proposal can be funded through taxes and donations, and by implementing positive conservation incentives, endangered species can be better protected. Humans can continue benefiting from them for years to come, and both humans and endangered species can coexist.